shadow has been very exciting this evening as she goes about searching for her dinner. I wonder how big her cub is now. I can't wait to see screenshots of it when Tristan finds it once again, and I'm sure he will in the course of the next few weeks. We're still with the Angamas, still watching them as they go about their slow evening movements. All 13 cubs are present and accounted for. I did a head count when the rest of them popped out of the lugger that they like to spend their days in. They're all sort of scattered about in a puddle around the drainage line. Now well, the amazing thing for our new viewers, for those of you that are new to the safari, it is basically completely dark now. I can't see them at this point with my own eyes, but we've got this amazing low light camera that allows us to view scenes just like this one and it makes use of absolutely every ounce of available ambient light. I suppose you can't really say ounce of light, but let's go with it. Oh, flop. You're too sweet. I can't believe how big the oldest cubs have got. Little males have got their manes starting to grow, tufts around their cheeks. Too sweet. Of course, what that means is that for the remainder of the sunset safari, we'll stay with them and see whether or not the ladies have any plans. <laughs> Cheryl, you say you love the brown spots on lions. I do too. And of course, the cubs have far more prominent spots than the adults. And then when they're born and when they're very tiny, they're actually basically spotty little cats. And it's a great way of helping to camouflage them and keep them safe from discovery when they're little. And although those spots fade over time, they never disappear completely. I like the spots too. It's an endearing reminder, especially in the adults of a time of their lives when they were just tiny little vulnerable creatures. Hey, there's one of the little ones. Hey, you. Even you've got big. out of the thickets. Oh, that's a lot of lions all cuddled together there. Little one wants to be in on the action. Kathy in Ohio, yes absolutely, it's, it's as green as it is because of the rain that we've had. So it's essentially, I mean the, the herds of wildebeest that came through have acted almost in a way like a fire. They've cleared away the grass, they've cleared away the moribund material, and it, it is almost like a fire's been through certain parts of this reserve. And that, that's not because there has been a fire, it's because the, the wildebeest have gone through. But you know how after a fire, when it rains, and a couple of weeks later you get the green shoots, well, actually a couple of days after rain and after a fire, you get the green shoots sticking through? It's just like that. Is it cold? It, it, you know, it, it, is, it is cold. It does get cold, particularly around about that sort of two, three o'clock in the morning mark, and especially if you're driving. Again, it, it, it never gets as cold as it does in Juma over the winter. I would say it hovers somewhere around about, in the dead of night, somewhere around about 15 or so, 15, 16. It, it does feel cold after when you're out all night. And when the wind howls, as it is at the moment, it of course drops the temperature by a few degrees. I wouldn't say we're nearly as cold as we would be on a mo winter's morning in Juma. I can hear something, but I can't work out what it is. And Chantal tells me it's 20 degrees. Um, mm, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I've never been the bravest person when it comes to cold, but I'm wearing a jersey and a jacket and a scarf at this point, which I, I sell that would be overkill for 20 degrees, even for me. Uh, um, I would say that the thermometer might be a bit confused, <laughs> would be my guess, if I had to be honest. It definitely feels, it definitely feels colder than that. What would you guess the temperature at, Craig? 15? 16? Mm. Around, there. Around there, says Craig. Maybe it's just because we've been sitting still in the wind. Perhaps Chantel's thermometer has got it spot on. I actually don't even know where that thermometer is. The weather station. Come to think of it. 
I don't know exactly. Such a peaceful evening. It's been very peculiar. It's been a very quiet few nights. In the nights that we've been out driving around, the lions have been silent. Last night was different across the other side of the river. We sat with the ridge progen. And as these things go, unfortunately they killed the wildebeest. They killed three wildebeest. Just out of our signal range. Just went in the wrong direction. Pancakes, that's a difficult one because it depends on it depends on what you're observing and it depends upon the the situation that you're in. So Piper Pancakes question is about how much time we actually spend driving around versus um she's seen something, I'm just trying to see exactly what it is, versus actually spending time observing the wildlife. Sometimes we come down the hill and we sit with the sausage tree pride an hour into our drive and, and we sit with them for the next potentially 20 hours in the past it has happened um, then occasionally we we drive for three hours to get to a destination that we want to get to if for example I wanted specifically to go and find the cheetah boys the musketeers I would probably have to drive for around about three hours to get there possibly even more around about three and a half if that was my specific objective for the day so it really is circumstantial um, I'm not sure if I could average it out. Obviously the distances that we travel here in the Mara are considerably more just because we've got 160,000 hectares of, of traverse uh, that we, we cover, distance or ground that we cover. And the roads, you know, there's certain roads that are more difficult than others. She is most definitely on a mission. What have you seen? Because I can't see anything. That's an elephant. You don't want to eat an elephant. Not a big one. Now, unfortunately, the, the area that we're in is the non-off-roading areas. So there's certain places where we can off-road and certain places that we can't. There's very good reasons for that decision um, in terms of the amount of people who come through and visit these parks. It, it wouldn't, there's certain places that are basically high use and more vulnerable to damage. What have you seen, my lady, my girl? A good vantage point. Oh, okay. Well, that was uneventful. A lovely view of the elephant and the lion. The second lioness on her way to join her. So they're definitely thinking about their meal for the night. And although they're not starving, they do look a little hungry. I saw some zebra up towards the escarpment. Cheryl, yes, there will be somebody permanently in the Mara for our safari live shows for the foreseeable future. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you possibly exactly what the schedule or the rotation is going to be, but there will be members of our camp here. Obviously one of our goals and one of our objectives will be to find and employ such a, we've already done with Manu, um, Kenyan staff as well. So it might be that they, they the people who are up here but honestly I mean I can't give you an exact answer because I don't think we know just yet but yes there will always be somebody here in the Mara for Safari Live absolutely alright we're gonna do a switch now and uh, Craig is gonna go for, to infrared obviously the light is getting a little bit low there we go Paula, a lone lion attacking an elephant, highly, highly unlikely. The only situation where that might happen is with an elephant calf in a situation where perhaps the mother is exhausted from giving birth, then a lone lion might attack. But really elephants are far too big and far too strong and far too big of a risk for lions to try and hunt on their own. And elephants know that. 
And for the most part, even the, the lions that do specialize in hunting elephants and that do hunt elephants, they only do it when they absolutely have to. During dry season when other food is particularly scarce. And they'll generally go for young males that are on the outskirts of the herd. And the reason behind that is because the herd is less dedicated to protecting them. To try and go for an elephant calf with the rest of the herd around would be almost the lion equivalent of suicidal.